Sterile compounding for pharmacy technicians. So what products do we sterile compound in the pharmacy? Medications that are required to be sterile include those administered through injection, intravenous infusion, which is an IV, intraocular injection in the eye or intrathecal injection in the spine or intramuscularly injection in the muscle. Because we make compounds out of more than one product, we have to assign beyond use dates instead of using like manufacturer's expiration dates. Beyond use dating, which we call BUD, you'll see that a lot, is utilized to determine the expiration date for compounded sterile preparation. Factors considered for determining the BUD include the temperature of the storage area and the container used in preparing the CSP. Category one BUD, 12 hours or less at controlled room temperature, 24 hours or less if required. For category two BUDs, a sterility test performed and a preservative is added for 42 days. Sterility tests performed and no preservative added, 28 days, controlled room temperature, so that's what a CRT means, or 42 days refrigerated. Sterility tests not performed and a preservative added, 28 days, controlled room temperature, or 42 days refrigerated. Sterility tests not performed and preservative not added, 96 days at controlled room temperature or nine days refrigerated. Storage for compounded sterile products. So they should be stored in a refrigerator or freezer if possible, because it is shown to slow the growth of microorganisms allowing for longer BUDs for CSP stored under colder temperatures versus controlled room temperature. Preparation characteristics also play a role in determining BUD. Those characteristics include method of achieving sterility, if sterility testing is performed, and if a preservative is added, thorough preparation combined with enhanced storage conditions like refrigeration and freezing can dramatically increase the time that the CSP can be stored before administration. Not all cold storage solutions are suitable for storing CSPs. Medical grade refrigerators and freezers provide a uniform environment as well as help stabilize and maintain temperatures during and after door openings, allowing the correct BUDs to be, signed, to be assigned. If the CSP cold storage unit goes out of temperature range, the BUD will need to be adjusted, which may lead to unexpected waste or improper BUD assignment. Medical grade Units will ensure a safe, reliable, and effective way to extend the BUD of a CSP, leading to safer administration and reduced costs related to less waste. What does parenteral mean? Medications that bypass the digestive system but are intended for systemic action. The term parenteral mean most commonly describes medications given by injections, such as intravenously or intramuscularly. So anything that's taken by mouth is not parenteral. So examples of contaminants when preparing sterile products. So when we're making IV bags, that is going to go directly into your bloodstream. So we wouldn't want to make it just out on a regular counter where anything could get into it. That is why we prepare them in the clean room. So the things that could become contaminant when making a sterile product is fungus, bacteria, spores, endotoxins, foreign objects, chemicals, physical matter, non-sterile components or objects, airborne particles, objects, and matter from environments with uncontrolled air quality. 
advantages and disadvantages of the parenteral route of administration. So some advantages are it can be used for drugs that are poorly absorbed, inactive, or ineffective if given orally. So one classic example for that is insulin. I would always get asked, why can't you, they just make insulin by mouth? Because it cannot be like the acid in your stomach would literally kill the insulin um, before it could do what it's supposed to do. Um, the IV route provides immediate onset of action. Again, so like if you're in an emergent situation, we're not going to um, give you a pill and hope that it works quickly because it's not going to. So we would definitely go the IV route. The intramuscular and subcutaneous routes can be used to achieve slow or delayed onset of action. So, so some disadvantages are lack of drug reversal, meaning if we give you something into your bloodstream, directly into your bloodstream, we're not going to be able to reverse it very quickly or quickly enough. The risk of infection and emboli the risk of hypersensitivity reactions and cost. So some examples of parenteral routes of administration is subcutaneous, which is under the skin, intramuscular, which is in a muscle, intravenous, in a vein, intrathecal, around the spinal cord. Peripheral veins versus the central vein. The peripheral veins is on the periphery of the body instead of into a central vein or artery. A central vein is a major vein present deep in the surface of the skin. IVP, IV push, rapidly delivers a single dose of medication directly into the bloodstream and takes very little time. Continuous infusion, a constant intravenous administration through a 24-hour period. Intermittent infusion, the infusion of IV medications over short periods of time and repeated at intervals of several hours. So what is USP 797? So USP 797 is from the United States Pharmacopeia, a set of enforceable sterile compounding standards. It applies to compounding pharmacies and facilities involved in the preparation of compounded sterile products. What does USP 797 regulate? USP develops standards for preparing compounded sterile medications to help ensure patient benefit and reduce risks such as contamination, infection, or incorrect dosing. There's three major sections for guidelines. Number one, responsibilities of personnel, the risk levels of classification of compounded sterile preparations. Number two, verification, accuracy, and sterility of compounded sterile preparations. Three, training, individual training and continued evaluation of personnel with respect to compounded products, including both quality and control of the preparation environment. What is allowed and not allowed in the LAFW, the laminar flow hood? Only objects essential for compounding sterile preparation should be placed in the hood. So no paper, pens, labels, or trays. All items that are needed should be wiped down with 70% sterile alcohol before placing them in the laminar flow hood. How many inches must you work inside of the laminar flow hood? You must work six inches from the side and the front of the workbench. Here are the divisions of the clean room. We have the ante room and the buffer room, which has the pass-through and the primary engineering control, which is either the laminar flow hood or the horizontal flow hood. And then we have a room for HVAC. That's not really something we worry about. So in the anteroom, it's an area which we prepare to make those um, IV admixtures. We gather all the materials, our labels, gowning. In the buffer room, it's an area in which hoods are kept and IV preparation takes place. The primary engineering control 
and the medication pass-through window are located in this room. So what is the difference between a laminar flow hood and a BSC? A laminar airflow workbench, primary engineering control, protects the product or preparation. No personnel protection is used for those and maybe either horizontal or vertical airflow. A biological safety cabinet is a totally enclosed environment that is available in either positive or negative airflow. These cabinets are known as glove boxes or barrier isolator hoods. So cleaning the laminar flow hood, First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you turn it off the laminar flow hood if it's on. Then we want to remove any items from within the hood. Clean all surfaces inside the hood with a lint-free wipe and sterile water. Inspect all surfaces for any crystallized solutions. Clean these with sterile water before continuing. Moisten a 4x4 gauze or other lint-free cloth with sterile 70% alcohol. Then wipe the top of the hood first, clean in a side to side motion from left to right, working back to front. Then you're going to wipe the horizontal intravenous IV pole and any hooks or brackets using a smooth mo motion from left to right. Then we're going to wipe from top to bottom on each side of the hood, always work from the back to the front. Then we're going to wipe the rear wall of the hood using a side to side motion from left to right, beginning at the top and working down to the bottom. Finally, we're going to wipe that flat surface, work, the flat work surface using a side to side motion from left to right, working from back to front. Pull the used, clothes out, the used cloths out of the hood. Never re-enter or wipe an area with the used cloths. And the last thing, allow the sterile alcohol to remain on surfaces to be dis disinfected for at least 30 minutes before such surfaces are used to prepare CSPs. So then we have cleaning the biological safety cabinet. So pretty much the same steps. Then we have compounding supplies. So 70% alcohol is definitely needed. Uh, an ampule breaker, filter needles for ampules, filter straws for ampules. Filters, forceps, male and female adapter, mini spikes, sterile 70% alcohol pads, syringe caps, syringe needles, syringes, transfer needles, tubing for pumps, and tubing transfer sets. Personal protection equipment. Here we have shoe covers. Then we have nitrile gloves. Then we have a gown, a face mask, and a head cover. So just like an FYI, when you get your lab kit, your gown will be blue instead of yellow. Then we have pictures of syringes and needles. <clears throat> so here's a syringe. This is the tip, obviously. The points of measurement are labeled on the syringe. This whole long piece is the barrel. This end piece is the phalange. And this piece here, the whole piece, is the plunger. Then for the needle, this needle is a lure lock needle and a lure lock syringe. Well, it's a lure lock syringe. So we can actually take this needle and screw it onto the end of the syringe and it shouldn't move. So we have the point. This little part here is the lumen, like that little indent. And then we have the bevel and the long piece is the shaft. That little piece connecting the hub and the shaft is the hilt and the bottom part is the hub.